Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the podium a member of the Menominee tribe, an educator who has taught and administered at every level, from elementary school to, high, to higher education, a respected leader in Indian country, the United States, and in many international venues. And most important today, the founding president of the College of the Menominee Nation, Dr. Verna Fowler. Good morning, and thank you all for being here today on this wonderful day in the life and history of the College of Menominee Nation. I thank you, Dean Visa, for and I am thankful to you, my colleagues, friends, neighbors, visitors, fellow tribal members, and the class of 2013. It's my pleasure and my honor on your behalf to introduce the Honorable Arnie Duncan, United States Secretary of Education, who is our guest speaker for today's festivities. There is a biography of his that we have included in our program. I have no intention of repeating them. But I would like to acknowledge a fact that he comes from the office of the highest and is the highest educator in our land, which is a great tribute to you, our friends. I would like to share one additional bit of information about our guest speaker and the history of our college. While completing his bachelor's degree at Harvard, Arnie Duncan took a year's leave. He went to do research in his hometown Chicago's Kenwood neighborhood. And at that time, he was working on his senior thesis. The title of that thesis was The Values, Aspirations, and Opportunities of the Urban Underclass. We here in rural Wisconsin are glad to know of his long-standing interest in struggling communities and commend him for keeping forefront in his mind the values, the aspirations, and the opportunities of the very underprivileged students in the spotlight. I have one other second bit of information for you and for the secretary. Some of you may know it, some of you may not. We are celebrating this year College of Menominee Nation's 20th anniversary. But we might have been celebrating the college's centennial if we had a champion way back in 1912 with the statue and the mindset of a secretary, Duncan, in Washington. In the files of the Bureau of Indian Affairs, and we have a copy at the college, there is a letter dated 1912 from a Menominee leader requesting from the Bureau, from our government, the establishment of a tribal college on our reservation. Sadly, nothing has happened, had happened in the 50 years after that letter was written. And I always have to put up with the pointed barbs of the Diné College, Navajo College president saying they were the first in the nation. 
But what a little, the feeling of little irked on my part, I always tell them, all you did was steal our idea. <laughs> <laughs> but CMN did not become a reality until 1993. Had the wheels of government moved more quickly, our guest today could be here helping us celebrate our 100th anniversary. But even at a youthful 20 years of age, we are still happy to have you here, Secretary W. So I would ask you to please join me in welcoming the United States Secretary of Education, Arnie Duncan. Thank you so much, President Powell, for that kind, kind introduction. It's a fascinating piece of history, and uh, we can't go back and fix the past as we could. We've got to keep pushing forward. And before I start, can we give another round of applause for Jerry Westcott, please? For his <laughs> so thrilled he's going into education. We need the next generation of great teachers. We need more men going into education. We need more men working in early childhood education. So, congratulations and wish you all the best. It's an absolute pleasure for me to join you today to do something that should happen much more often in education, and that's to celebrate success. I can't tell you how honored I am to have this opportunity to speak with you and to celebrate your accomplishments with your friends and family. Can I ask every graduate who is the first in their family to get a college degree to please raise your hands and keep your hands up for a moment. Now if I ask every graduate who either worked while they earned their degree or came back to this college to complete their degree after taking a break from their education, could you also raise your hands? I see a lot of student hands in the air. Please give them all a big round of applause. <laughs> to our graduates and their families who helped them get here, congratulations. You've overcome some tremendous odds. Each and every one of you has set the example and cleared the way for others who will follow in your footsteps, hopefully through generations to come. First generation college students, like so many of you, face real challenges. Many of you had the support from your wonderful family and friends. Others navigated this path towards a college degree with less help. All of you took college entrance exams. You applied for financial aid and searched out where how to apply to college. In addition to the hurdles that many first-generation college students face, American Indian students face unique barriers. As you know, the statistics are often very tough. The suicide rate for American Indians is tragically more than twice that of other minority groups. The death rate from alcohol-related causes is unacceptably high. And violent crime and high rates of unemployment ravage too many reservations. Culture, language, and geographic isolation limit access to mainstream colleges for many young American Indian students. But despite all those very real challenges, all of you, all of you, with determination and grit, found ways to persevere and to succeed. I uh, met earlier, earlier before we started with Dean Bisaw and his son Aaron. I loved hearing that story. When Aaron first enrolled at the University of Wisconsin as a freshman, he just wasn't prepared for his engineering and his business classes. In fact, he wasn't prepared for college life in general, and he struggled both academically and socially. For Aaron, a member of the Menominee tribe, it seemed like the other university students may have been speaking Greek. At his father's urging, Aaron returned here to the reservation and enrolled in CMA. He then worked intensively with Dr. Martin, a physics professor here. And after a year of intense work with Dr. Martin, he returned to the University of Wisconsin, prepared for the first time for rigorous college coursework. And he was so successful that Aaron even began to tutor other students in his engineering and physics classes. And just two weeks ago, Aaron graduated from Wisconsin. And he became the first member of the Menominee Tribe to graduate with degrees in engineering and physics. His 
father told him that his initial uh, challenges at college were not in any way a judgment of his ability, but all about a simple lack of preparation. Preparing students to succeed is the job of the education system. And it's the job that CMN does amazingly well. In so many ways, Aaron's story is your story. And please take a moment to reflect upon all the barriers that you have overcome to be here today. You are here and you are graduating because you fundamentally understand the power of education. Not only are you empowered to choose a career that fits with your skills and interests and passions, you can change your own lives and the lives of other people and the lives of those on the reservation. Your voice, your work, and the example you set can change the world. And it's a testament to the opportunities that an education provides. You can lose lots of things in life, but no one can ever, ever take your education away from you. But please remember that none of you got to this day here by yourself. None of us makes this journey alone. Along the way, there was someone who gave you a helping hand, whether it was a family member, a friend, a mentor, or a professor. And to help with the inevitable bumps on the road and the journey ahead of you, you will need help from time to time when you stumble. We all need that help. So as we celebrate your success today, it's also important to remember those who are not as fortunate. Think about your many classmates who began this journey with you as college freshmen, but will not receive their degrees today. Think about those who have not yet graduated from high school yet. I was told that the Ojibwe called the Menominee the wild rice people because the Menominee tribe was gifted with wild rice. Your success here today is a clear sign that you are the chosen ones among your tribe and a gift to your people. But with that gift, with that accomplishment, comes real obligations and responsibility. I would urge each of you, of our, prou our proud graduates, to think of how, in the course of your careers and raising your families, that each of you can also give back to the community. Think about how you can help others, just as those who went before you helped to bring you to this day. Know that you are a link in a chain that must continually grow stronger and more powerful. Graduating from college matters a great deal, but it also matters what you learn while in college. CMN has trained you in the STEM fields, in nursing, and in teaching. You're ready for further education, and you'll become the next generation of teachers, of accountants, of nurses, and public servants. More importantly, you will go forth and proudly represent the Menominee Drive to the rest of the world. That is an amazing honor. You will follow in the footsteps of the great Menominee who came before you, including Ingrid Flying Eagle Woman. As you know, Ingrid was a modern day Menominee warrior. She was a tireless defender of the rights of indigenous peoples, not just here, but around the world. Ingrid was so passionate about the preservation of native languages and cultures. She understood that the visions of our ancestors continue to live through all of us. She pointed out that for so long, indigenous people have been unable to speak, unable to contribute to the solutions of the problems facing humanity, despite the vast repository of knowledge and wisdom enshrined in all native cultures. Her eloquent plea, and I quote, was to unlock the silence of our peoples, because peace lies in all of us working together to make things better for future generations. If Ingrid Flying Eagle Woman was here today, I think she would urge all of you to unlock that silence so that the generations that follow in your footsteps can speak the Menominee language to the world. And speak you must. As a consequence of a forced assimilation, only 375,000 American Indian languages, a language speakers today remain in the United States. And just 660 people remain who speak Menominee. This is both a tragedy and a crisis, but it can be fixed. The loss of your language has alienated many American Indians from their own history, culture, and ways of knowing. Too many young people today have forgotten who they are and where they come from. And that separation from one's true identity has devastating consequences. We must change course before it's too late. The revitalization of your language and ensuring its continuity are the first two steps taken in preserving and strengthening our community's culture. We all know that the use of native languages builds identity, encourages communities to move towards social unity and self-sufficiency, 
and helps us stay connected to our ancestors' way of knowing. It enables us to learn from the past and draw strength from it, even as we plan for the future. Tribal colleges like CMN play a critical, critical role in revitalizing American Indian culture and languages. And CMN has played this role even in these very tough economic times. You are preserving your languages and cultures, not only for your communities, but for the entire world. The truth is that American Indian culture is embedded at the very heart of CMN. I was so impressed to learn that the Menominee language is taught all the way from early learning centers through high schools. Here at the college, over three quarters of the students have enrolled in a Menominee language class. And the college is currently training instructors to teach throughout the reservation. President Obama and I want every child to have a world-class education. And today, more than ever, a world-class education requires students to be, to be able to speak and read languages in addition to English. Being bilingual is a tremendous advantage. Much research shows that being bilingual increases a child's mental flexibility and improves performance on academic assessments. In fact, children who study a second language actually score higher on verbal tests conducted in English. And finally, bilingual students tend to have better creativity and problem-solving skills. They're able to develop a stronger sense of their own identity and often are more sensitive to other people and other cultures. Those abilities are exactly the 21st century skills that we would like to see in all of our students. To close, as you venture forth tomorrow in the years that follow, I urge you to remember at a very deep level who you are and where you came from. Remember that you stand on the shoulders of many great Menominee warriors who came before you, such as Ingrid and others, like Ada Deer. In fact, the reason the Menominee tribe enjoys federal recognition today is due, in large measure, to Ada's tremendous hard work. In 1954, the, the Menominee were terminated as a federally recognized tribe, but they fought to regain their official status. That attempt to disenfranchise the Menominee people awakened the political consciousness of a young woman studying at the University of Wisconsin Law School, Ada Deer. Ada realized she needed to join the fight to restore federal recognition of her people. Many people said she was too young. They told her she was too naive. They told her you can't beat, you can't fight the system. And yet, like all of you sitting here today, she proved the, scout, the, the doubters and the skeptics wrong. She absolutely beat the odds. She helped them, she helped bring the termination era to a close and pressured Congress to restore official recognition to her tribe, to your tribe. But even then, Ada Deer didn't stop with the rest of her laurels. After restoring the official status of the Menominee Nation, Ada went on to draft a new constitution for the Menominee people. And then she served as the first female Assistant Secretary of Indian Affairs under President Clinton. It is because of the work of Ada Deer and so many like her that your people have retained its status as a federally recognized tribe. Students who are the first to graduate from their families, uh, first to graduate from college and their families, carry the dreams and the hopes of their ancestors and elders with them. Many of you are fulfilling the dreams of your ancestors today, and they are so proud. So please, sometime today, thank your parents, thank your family, Thank your friends, thank your teachers. And one day, I fervently hope that you'll proudly be sitting here watching your own children graduate from college. I hope one day you'll hear your children say, thank you so much for helping to bring me to this moment. The link of the chain should not be broken. Ada Deer said, and I quote, we need to turn to the wisdom of the past before we plan for the future. We all have choices. We have choices in our communities, our families, tribes, and personal choices. <coughs> what will each of you choose to do? Who will you choose to be? What impact do you want to have? In Ingrid Flying with Eagle Woman's words, it's time to unlock the silence. It's time for you to speak to the world. Thank you so much for allowing me to share this special, special day with you. Congratulations to each and every one of you. I'm so proud and I look forward to great anticipation what you'll do in the days and years ahead. Thank you for having me here today.